Hey friends, welcome back. So in this video, we're going to focus on searching routine records. This is another function that is in our app structure, as you can see. Uh, we've been able to go through the whole, all the screens that we have in our app structure, which is amazing. So now we're just closing in on certain features that will help us understand other functionalities as that ESA database has. So we're going to focus on the search. So we're going to uh, allow a user to be able to enter a routine name and search and the, and the list over here should be populated based on the name that has been entered by the user. So let's go to the project. We'll be working on the main.dat file. So first things first, in the body of the main page, we're going, we had only the list, right? So now we're going to create a column that will hold the list and also add more of like a text field where the user will enter an, a routine name that they're searching for. So to do that, I just come here, set refactor, set column, and we're set, so now I can enter my text form, text field, and say text field. And give it a controller at the top here. Say final text editing controller, search controller is equals to text editing controller. Must have typed it wrongly. Mm -hmm. seem to forget them. <laughs> All right, so that's done. So now this is what we're going to pass to the text field and set controller. Because this is what helps us pick whatever the user has inserted. Next, we're going to add, um, it's more of styling, if I may say. So we're going to create a style where we're going to have like a hint or a placeholder that says search routine. So to do that, we just use the decoration property and say input. Sorry. Const input decoration. And inside it, we set the border. So at the outline, input border has a certain type of style. We just can we're creating that effect of a search bar. So there's this border that I need to add. Uh, a hint text that says search routine. Then we can give it a form of a style. I'm oh, sorry, not inside, inside the hint text. Say hint style, text style, and add a font style of italic. Seem to be. Hmm. 
All right. So we have the placeholder that will say such routine. We have created some style for it. We have the controller. We have bordered the text field just to give it that effect of a search bar. Then now we can add something else. Now, when a user inserts, we want whenever the, the user inserts, we're able to search, right? There's a specific property that the text field has called on change. And on change, we have to pass the function that we want it to execute when anything changes or when a user inserts, for in our case, a name. So let's go and create it at the bottom here and give it the name search routine. But I want by name. We are being specific here by name. And then I pick this. I go back to our own change and pass it here. So there's of course an error. We haven't finished creating the function. We'll be able to sort it uh, right away. But the first thing we can do is at least let's comment this part and see how the our search section or our text field looks like. Let's give it also a small padding just to for aesthetics. And then now let's see how it looks. So as you can see, here's our text field. It has a placeholder that tells the user search routine. So the user knows they need to click on here and enter this type of routine that they're looking for, which is awesome. And we have like our border around it. So now we want to work on the function that allows the user to be able to search. And the information here changes the routines that are that follow that query of the search will be displayed here. And when you clear it, you show all the routines that exist. So let's go back to the project and go to our function, search routine by name. So in our search routine by name, there's a parameter, the on change passes the value that has been inserted by the user on that search routine by name. So it expects, we're supposed to have an argument of string search name, whatever has been passed by the unchanged um, property. That's where you see now the error has gone. And now inside here, we're going to perform, um, we're going to call the routine collection. Then we're going to create a filter for it or a query for it to go and check where a routine title is equivalent or contains uh, a text that a user has inserted. So let's do that. So we, as usual, we say final routine collection is equals to widget.esa.routines. And then inside here we say final search results because they can they come in form of like an array or a list, right? So this results, um, this is a variable we're going to assign whatever we'll actually filter from the routine collection and it will require an await processor. So let's set our function as a sync. So we say await our routine collection dot filter, all right? So we are filtering the title saying check where title contains because you don't want to be specific right now let's just check where the title contains a certain text that a user has inserted so it uh, contains the search name dot find all And that's a simple way of how to actually search uh, for search for an item in within the a specific collection. So now we come here and set state. So we're supposed to we have routines. Um, let me show. You. Remember we have these routines, which whenever we read uh, we read routines, it's in this. We set it. 
with whatever we have received from this function, which always reads everything in their routine collection. But now we want to set it with whatever has been filtered based on the search query. So we just use the same function here and we use it over here. But now we pass it to the search results. Okay. And it's it's simply as that. But now here is the issue. Whenever um whenever this happens and the routines is updated, you remember that we have a feature builder that builder that always checks if something has changed, it will always read the routines, all of them. So you find our search uh, will always be overwritten. So what, how we do this is we can create a small flag, just a small flag to check for us or to set whether we are searching or we're not searching. So to do that, we just go to alt at the top and just add the word searching on the main page here. The flag a boolean that we are searching that we are setting. So initially let it be false. So by default, we'll always have um, our class generating all the routines, right? But now in a situation where we are changing, we should set the search to true. So we're just trying to help the class understand at this point we are searching. So we'll come and add this here and say is equals to true. But that's just assigning, right? So why do we need this searching? We need it at this point of read of read routines where we say if if searching if not searching then that is that means if it's false, we're not searching anything, just show us all the routines. But if the searching is true, just let us hold the routines of that specific information that has been filtered. So we'll set it with that and save. So basically the main function for searching is this part. This other thing that we have added is just to manage or to manipulate how the, the, the the user interface interface will behave uh, anytime uh, at the point of when the routines are being displayed. So I think we can refresh our screen and see how that looks. But now we'll need to add a few routines so that you can be able to have uh, at least to play around with. Uh, so I'll go back to my routine and let's just create some few routines here. Washing dishes, start time, 35 a.m. on a Tuesday, Wednesday, we add work, send emails, we pass, 1.45 p.m. on a Friday, we add, we can add something else like school. We can say washing uniforms, start at 30 p.m. on Saturday. We can add something else as um, work group meeting and we add 1 40 p.m set it on friday and add so if we go back we have a list of items awesome so i tried to set some of them to have like similar names i'm not sure if i've done a good job on that um there are two that have that uh, Submit, submit, okay. So let's come here and search. I think I'll use washing because there are two items. So if I write in washing, nothing happens. So let me let me check on the code. It's supposed to unchanged. It's supposed to set that and okay. Let's go back to the project and see.
see. Maybe I didn't refresh. Um, We had commented our, <laughs> and I thought that's why the error had gone because we had set an argument, but we had actually commented the main thing that's supposed to help us call this function. Yeah, that's better than having some other crazy bugs. Uh, so, yeah, so you can see it's working. Let's just delete everything and see. So we have all our routines, right? So let me search washing. And you can see it changes as we go. If I say submit, it changes as we go, send. So our search functionality is working and it was just, it involved only that simple section of the search uh, function that we have. So that's that, that's short and sweet. Um, so in the next lesson, we're going to focus on handling transactions. I'll be able to explain what transactions are in the ESA database, but it's also general in also in relational databases, what they really are and see how we're going to actually use them. So see you on the next one.